This is a very short video on hypolipidemic agents. This is a class of drugs that modifies the lipid content in the blood, and this can happen through various mechanisms. We'll see a lowering of the bad cholesterol. We'll talk about a raising of the good cholesterol, and we also have a drug that lowers triglyceride count as well. So on this page here, we have the mechanisms of lipid metabolism. We're going to be talking about drugs that kind of alter these mechanisms, that make some changes, and uh, some, some of their side effects, some of their contraindications, and when a physician might use them. So this is hypolipidemic agents. Let's start with statins, a very commonly used class of drugs. Statins work by inhibiting the enzyme HMG-CoA reductase. Now that's kind of a mouthful, but this one enzyme is the rate-limiting step in cholesterol synthesis. Cholesterol synthesis is shown on the right there. It's a long pathway. You could see HMG-CoA reductase as that third enzyme right where that pointer is now. HMG-CoA reductase. It's the rate-limiting step, and you can see that statins inhibit that step right there. So if you inhibit the rate-limiting step, that's going to be your best shot at inhibiting the production of cholesterol in the body. And that's what statins are trying to do. So statins mainly have an effect on LDL. That's, that's the reason they're usually used. They decrease LDL. Other effects include an increase in HDL and a decrease in triglycerides, which all of these are good things. But the main effect is to decrease LDL. They have been proven in many studies to reduce the risk of coronary artery disease. Two big side effects, liver toxicity and muscle toxicity. Liver toxicity is because they are metabolized, most of the statins at least, are metabolized by the cytochrome P450 system in the liver. So if you have some other drugs that interact with that system, you don't want to use them with statins. You don't want to use two drugs together that might be damaging or that might be using the same system in the liver. Muscle toxicity caused by statins, uh, it's rhabdomyolysis, it's the breakdown of muscle, can be, can be caused by people who take statins. Some contraindications to statin usage are people who have pre-existing liver diseases, people who have the cytochrome P450 inhibitor drugs, as we mentioned earlier, and also pregnancy, because statin has been shown to cause birth defects. And at the bottom here, we just have a list of commonly used statins. Next class we're going to talk about are the bile acid sequestrants. These aren't used quite as often, but they are a good alternative to statins uh, for people who are on that contraindications list for pregnant ladies and uh, some people with liver disease, people who are taking other drugs that might interact with statins. Bile acid sequestrants essentially bind bile in the gut and they prevent the reuptake of bile. So let's get a little more background on bile. Cholesterol is typically converted to bile acid and secreted into the GI tract. So one way to get rid of cholesterol is to convert it to bile acid and to dump it into the GI tract. Now, usually 99% of this bile is reabsorbed into the body. If you use a bunch of bile acid sequestrants, you are able to excrete more than 1% of the bile acid from the body. And this forces the body to produce more bile acid from cholesterol. So this is another method of, of losing cholesterol, of reducing cholesterol in the body by holding onto the bile acid and not letting it be resorbed when it's released into the gut. So again, the effects are to decrease LDL and to increase HDL. Bile acid sequestrants don't really have an effect on triglycerides, but their main purpose is to decrease LDL. Bile acid sequestrants, of course, have some side effects, mainly GI distress. And this makes sense because you're inhibiting fat absorption. So you can cause nausea, constipation, some bloating as well. Some things that make er, one, one major solution to these bile acid sequestrant GI effects are to increase fiber. And of course, bile acid sequestrants can cause malabsorption of other drugs, mostly lipid soluble drugs and the fat soluble vitamins. And this makes sense. Bile is used to emulsify fats and aid in the absorption of fats. If you have a sequestrant of bile acid, you're going to be less able to absorb fatty molecules and fats themselves. So the fat soluble vitamins, vitamins D, E, A, and K, DEEK, will be malabsorbed, will not be able to be absorbed quite as easily for somebody who's taking bile acid sequestrants. And you want to avoid using bile acid sequestrants in people who have dysbeta lipoproteinemia with a very, very high triglyceride count. 
at the bottom here, it's a little cut off, but we have a couple, three classes of, or three individual bile acid sequestrants. They all start with Cole or C-H-O-L-E or C-O-L-E. So pretty easy to remember. Next class of drugs that's worth knowing is niacin. Niacin prevents the release of free fatty acids into the bloodstream from adipocytes. That's its mechanism of action. It increases HDL in the body by decreasing the hepatic secretion of a major protein in HDL. So if the, if the liver is no longer excreting a protein that is used to make up HDL, it's going to increase HDL in the body. So its major effects are to increase HDL, to decrease LDL, and to decrease triglyceride, but mainly it's used to increase the good cholesterol, the HDL. Some side effects include skin flushing, which can be resolved with aspirin, hyperuremia, hyperglycemia, GI distress, and hepatotoxicity. And the contraindications kind of relate to some of these side effects. Patients with gout should not be getting niacin. Gout is a buildup of uric acid, so niacin, which causes hyperuremia, will only make their gout worse. People with liver disease should not be receiving niacin, and if they do, you should heavily monitor their liver enzymes because niacin is known for its hepatotoxicity. Uh, the common names for niacin are listed here. It's also known as nicotinic acid or vitamin B3. If you have a deficiency in niacin, it also prevents it from doing its other functions. You can get a disease uh, that, that causes skin lesions and mental disturbance, as shown in that image on the right there. And the last of the hypolipidemic drugs that's worth mentioning is the fibrates. Fibrates work by activating a transcription factor that increases the enzyme lipoprotein lipase. Lipoprotein lipase is an enzyme that converts VLDL to LDL, and it therefore reduces the amounts of VLDL and triglycerides. Now remember that the large lipoproteins, the VLDL, very low density lipoprotein, and chylomicrons are primarily composed of triglycerides. Therefore, if you reduce VLDL by activating more lipoprotein lipase, you're going to reduce VLDL and the triglyceride levels that are in the plasma. This is done through a transcriptional factor called a PPAR, which is a regulator that transports from the cytoplasm to the nucleus to bind regulatory regions of target genes. So in the case of fibrates, you're activating a transcription factor, a PPAR, that transports from the cytoplasm to the nucleus to bind to an activating region of the lipoprotein lipase gene. You're increasing the production of lipoprotein lipase. The net effect, as I mentioned earlier, is going to be to decrease triacylglycerides, decrease the TGs. You're also going to see a decrease in LDL and an increase in HDL, all good things. The main reason to use fibrates is to decrease triglycerides. Some side effects of fibrates are that they cause GI distress. You get a skin rash. You get mild toxic or mu some muscle toxicity. And uh, if you remember from a couple minutes ago, we talked about statins also causing muscle toxicity. So these two drugs can kind of have a combinatory effect and really damage your muscles. It also causes hypokalemia, and it could cause some arrhythmias. You want to avoid using fibrates in patients with liver and renal disease due to the damage it can cause to those organs. And a couple common names of fibrates are listed at the bottom there. This has been a brief overview of hypolipidemic agents. I hope it was helpful, and thank you for listening.